update time guys on the uh, reef tank um, today is technically going to be the uh, third dose of the new algae I'm not going to do it on camera uh, because right now I just literally turned the lights on right now to shoot this update if you remember I run my light cycle opposite of basically daylight and you can see over here I got daylight uh, my lights aren't going to turn on for like another <laughs> like three hours four hours right now so I just turned these on right now um, to do this update stop I just wanted to do a little update to show you uh, what's going on and uh, you can see here in the week um, my glass buildup of algae isn't terrible there's definitely some but it's not really really bad um, but I wanted to show you just what I'm dealing with here you can see here this was my Setosa and it's peeling and bleaching. Um, this Monty Cap is actually recovered, and so did this one in the back there. Uh, my Mystic Sunset looks like the the uh, the tissue necrosis has stopped. Um, so I might just frag off what's left of that and put it on a frag disc. Uh, and this Monty Cap here, this is like a super lime green Monty Cap. It doesn't look like it under the white lights, but it is. And in the back there, behind the green slimer, that is my Spongodes, and that is bleaching. So, I'm missing, as I look around there right now, I'm noticing I'm missing an acro that should be right there where that big old glob of epoxy is there. Um, and here is my Superman Monopora. I'm really, really upset this one's bleaching. Um, and then, well, that one's peeling. And then right here is my Sunset Monopora. And this one's just bleaching. It's got amazing polyp extension still. It's just bleaching. So, we're going to see what happens. None of my acros are all screwed up like that. Um, it's just the Monopora's taking a hit. Um, my Red Planet's doing awesome. Um, the Green Slimer's doing really good. I mean, all the acro are doing well. A little carpet anemone doing good. That's just the Monopora's taking a hit right now. I don't know what the deal is. Um, overall, tank is doing very well. The fish are doing good. Um, they're always extremely hungry. Um, big old fat bellies on these guys. I feed them a lot. I told you in the last video I was going to be up in the feeding, so that's what I'm doing. Um, here pretty soon I'm going to be digging up all my zooanthids. And... Um, putting them on this rock over here since my anemone um, decided not to use this rock and my anemone this is its this is where it decided to make its home back here um, I'm cool with this it actually comes out from right where it's at there and it kinda comes through this crack here and fills up this space and it it jacks up this acro right there you can see where it's beating that acro up but I'll frag off that little leg of the acro and it'll be good. Um, so, yeah. I um, wanted to show a couple things here. Uh, one is my lighting arrangement. You can see here I got three uh, LEDs. Each LED has two um, light cords. One for the blue, one for the whites. But you'll see down here I... Um, only have one cord going to each timer. This is the blue timer here, and that's the white timer there. And we'll get to what's happening here in just a second. So, uh, what I did is basically cut the male the male end off of each of these lights and really shorten them up. I think it's only about uh, maybe three foot of cord on each light. And I went to this junction box here, and it's wire nutted into the corresponding cord. And um, we got these little zip tie things here, keeping the cord um, tightly against the back of this uh, railing system here. That way it hides the cord. Can't really see the cord um, from the front side here, so you know, it just hides it. And it only made me have one cord running to the inside of the stand to go to the timer. So, And um, all this wiring is up to NEC code, so for voltage and the wire size and all that good stuff and amperage so um, I made sure I did it up to code keep everything safe so um, 
What's happening is, as you'll notice here, I have something missing and that would be the reef keeper. Um, I decided to not go with the reef keeper because that thing is, uh, it's a pain in my ass, um, for lack of better words. I'm, I'm sick of trying to mess with it. I could never get uh, ports two and three to switch, um, but the first port and, and the fourth port would always switch no problem. I think it's something to do with the solid state relays on those on the two and three port. Just got really aggravated with it and figured it's really not worth my time anymore. If it's some, if if there's something that I paid that much money for and I'm having that much of a hard time with it, it's just not worth me even having it keeping. So the uh, entire reef keeper system is right there in that bag. So obviously, what I had to do for things that I was going to control with that obviously is my lights, and you'll see up in here. There's no dosing pumps, there's no reef keeper, nothing. Uh, what I did is I just got one of my three foot power bars here. And that's what I'm using for power, basically. Um, this power bar is plugged into one of my inline GFCIs, which is on the back of the tank. And I just have regular manual timers. Just set it with the pins and that's it. it <laughs> they've never failed me before. I was just trying to go a little bit high tech with this tank, I guess, and it, it failed. Um, and here in my previous video, you saw me build the DIY auto top off. And this is exactly why I'm using it here on this system. And it's working flawlessly. And this timer over here um is running the fuge light and right now i got the skimmer unplugged because i'm trying to build up that nutrient level in the tank so i'm not skimming right now but normally this skimmer would be plugged in with the um with the refugium and the refugium light and the skimmer would run at night um complete opposite of the actual display tank lighting so uh that'll be i'll be hooking that back up here and putting it back online again um, and I'm also no longer using the Tom's Aqua Lifter. I'm using a MaxiJet 404 for my auto top off. Uh, the Tom's Aqua Lifter is going to be going with the Reef Keeper. Um, just another piece of equipment that was not working for the height of my stand. Um, it was it was just starting to really piss me off how long it took. This is this is easily um, about an eight gallon reservoir right here. So by the time the uh, float switch activated for um, basically calling for auto top off um, I mean it had to fill up like three gallons maybe um, and it took that freaking aqua lifter forever so going with the 404 in here and it's working out really well the refugium is cleared up very well let me see if I can get this bucket out of the way I got some acro frags in here that are doing really really well actually uh, a little feather duster back there still doing well and the uh, dragon's breath is like huge now triple the size easy um so yeah that's what's going on the drain system is still running very well i gotta take these filter socks out there you can see they're clogged this is a good example to show you guys there spilling over so uh, i'm still using the dj power strip um i love this thing and we'll never get rid of it i'm gonna be um putting labels on here pretty soon uh, that way I know which is which and I stop guessing and flipping everything off when I need one certain thing off. So, um, yeah, I'll be using this still, um, this power strip, and I might be putting... Um, now, everything that needs to be on timers is up here, and everything that I would want to manually control is going to be on the DJ strip. So, um, yeah, guys, that's basically it. Um, I'm going to be doing a review here on the uh, Jabo DC-12000. Um, it's a good pump, guys, believe it or not. Oh, yeah, these exhaust fans are still doing really, really good, <laughs> by the way. But, uh, yeah, that DC pump is, uh, it's awesome. So, uh, yeah, guys, anyways, we'll see you in the next update. Oh, one more thing. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, I moved the, uh, one of the Jabo WP40s to this back corner here. And we kind of got it blown off in a diagonal direction across there. Um... I did that because I was just getting, oh, excuse me, I was getting way too much turbulence directly dead center in the tank, and um, I was catching this little sandstorm here in the middle of the tank, um, the Favio wasn't liking it, and my mushrooms were all over the place, matter of fact, one of the mushrooms blew all the way over here, 
So, and I wasn't getting much flow in this corner because this pump was inhibiting these the pumps flows from these ones from getting over in here. I don't know, it was really weird. So, I decided to move it there and um it's been working like a charm ever since. I get really good um flow to these acros up front without beating them up. And um this is getting a little bit beat up. I might find a new place for this, but other than that, guys, generally overall everything's doing well. Thank you for watching the update, and we will see you in the next one. And tonight I will be doing another new algae dose. Alright, peace.